Hey everybody, this is Bonnie Branham with Whimsical Art Painting Parties. And I'm going to be painting tonight a lemon drop a grandparent and grandchildren's name list. Um, this is it. Grandmama and Papa's. That's our grandparent name. Lemon drops. And then it's got my six grandchildren's names on each lemon. And I thought y'all might like to see this. These would make great Mother's Day gifts. And you can paint it in any size. You can make it door hanger size. You can make it <clears throat> a 12 or so inch uh, door hanger. That would be in your, um, like if you built a, a wreath with straw uh, and flowers and and all that. Let me turn that on. Get stuff in the middle. Away. And so, you can have it any, any size you want. But I'm painting this one small to go on a little stand to put on, uh, maybe on my part of my mantle for, uh, really for May and, uh, and also, uh, that would be when Mother's Day is and, <clears throat> and it has, um, it could be on a little stand in my, in my kitchen. But I know that lemons are in, and I know that one of the <clears throat> one of the things that we've chosen for mantle makeup in the next few months, I think it's going to be lemons. And I'm going to tilt this down a, a bit. Soon. I'm sorry, I hit the wrong button. Our new one away. All right. So as you can see, it's not super wide um it's about 12 inches mike measured it with his hand the other day and i was like that looks more than 12 inches no it's 12 inches i said how do you know it's 12 inches without a measuring tape on it well i just know the the it's 12 inches by the shape by the size of my hand and i said are you, are you sure and he picked up that measuring tape that was right there beside us. He was exact. I was like, how do you do that? How do you know and measure with your hand and get that close to exact? So it is about 12 inches. It would fit nice on a little one of the... Um, trays the tiered trays or it could go on um, <clears throat> on an, a wreath if you made a straw uh, wreath and then added flowers and I don't know I'm not into making those kinds of wreaths but you know what I'm talking about and then this could fit inside of it and your mom could take it off after the season and just save it and put it on a, a little stand and show her little sweet babies and there's nothing nothing sweeter than those grandbabies they just steal your heart from the very first so this is an idea for you a mother's day gift and it's time to you know start thinking of the things that are happening in the next three months and that would be one of them and you could um you can paint this one yourself and i can send you the the stencil and the the cut out and everything but we, uh, I think this is going to be cute. I've got a couple of others that are door hanger size. But I wanted to put this one somewhere on a little table. Do y'all, any of you have things like that on your wall or on your tabletop? I think this will go along with our, our mantle makeup later in the spring. 
Well, I missed a bunch of these. So how's everyone's day? If you're if you're watching, please tell us hi. Please let us know who's out there. We we like to we would like to say hello to you. We'd love for you to visit with us and interact and let us know what you think. Tell us where you're from, if you're a painter, all of that fun stuff. Well, I still missed that little spot right there. I'm going to add it back. Get my little lemons evened up. Alright, almost got it. So this is going to be, obviously, it's going to be yellow. And... <clears throat> I've got a few shades of yellow that I think you'll like. I can see some of my people here, but I don't know who they are. Let's see if, if it's on my iPad, because sometimes it doesn't show up <coughs> in my on my phone, whereas I can see it on the iPad. I'm not sure that that's working. I knocked my, I had the little vacuum, the shark vacuum running. Hey, Mike. Yeah. Check the internet and see if it's plugged in. What? Check the internet. It's going round and round and round. But I have, I think I have this one on, on, um. Uh, just regular. Alright, so all of this back here is going to be painted white. And then these sections are going to be yellow. So I'm going to start with just a basic white. And then I'm going to add that yellow in. And it's already painted. Say that your vacuum probably knocked it off. Yeah, it did. It knocked it over and pushed it up under the um, cabinet. All right, I'm just going to go in these just a little bit. I'm not going to worry about every one of them because it's already painted white. And I'm just using a half inch flat and I'm just Filling in, I'm going over the tops of those lines that I just made, and I'm not putting it thick, and I can still see the line through it, which would be important for me not to lose the pattern. If you do it heavy, the pattern can be covered up with white. So I'm trying to just put one layer so that I can... I can see the pattern where I'm supposed to be painting these, but not, I don't want, I want it to be the white, uh, I want to be a brighter white than my base coat was. I base coat with flat interior paint, and that kind of seals off the wood and makes the colors that you do add to the wood a little brighter because they soak in so bad to just a, a piece of wood. <clears throat> so we're almost to spring. We've, uh, it'll be the middle of this month. We'll be in this, in officially in spring. And so I am ready to decorate and get all my house and yard and front door and all that ready for the springtime and I think all of my winter has now been packed away so I'm ready for for some good springtime weather I think I'm going to start out with 
the pale daffodil and then I may do some shading with the a different yellow maybe even the bright yellow so I'm just following around that pattern and moving my arm not my paintbrush I mean, obviously, I'm moving my paintbrush, but I'm not picking it up and brushing the strokes on. I'm just putting enough paint on it to make it through that first amount of paint without, without having little choppy lines. You want it to be smooth, if you can. Now, this will be a simple little design and if you want it for your you know for maybe your back porch door or room a wall on your in your kitchen this would be well any size we can do up to 24 inches And I have to say, Bethany designed this one, not I. And she did a good job, as always. She made this pattern and put all the grandkids' names on it. That's my outer edge. Outer edge of that. And I'm going to, let me see if he got that turned back on. I think he said he did. I was running my little vacuum this afternoon and all of a sudden everything went off. Let me see. Oh. That's the, it ran into the box that makes all that do whatever it does. I don't think anybody's talking tonight. I'm all, I'm painting all by myself. All right, now I'm going to go back and forth and look at the colors that she picked. Okay, now I'm going to... I'm going to paint in these with that same, now let's see how, how different yellow flame is. There is a slight difference. Eh, it's not enough to notice. But I'll use yellow flame. It does have a tiny bitter, bit of bright paint on it. Not as, not as bright as just a one named yellow that I have but I will use that around the outer edges to just shade it with so that it's got three shades of color Just use a small, uh, small flat brush, or you might like having a small round brush. I like either one of these. This one, you can make the outer edge pretty easily. It, it does not curve around those outer curves quite as easily as a round one if you prefer a number eight round. I can see a difference in this color and that color. It's a little bit bolder. I may, I may like that one better. I'm ready for lemonade and 
our flowers to start blooming and just I'm not looking forward to pollen that comes with it it will look like a it'll look like it rained yellow snow and it'll be floating in the air probably in the next two weeks but you gotta have that to have the pretty flowers all summer Painting small ones are a little bit tighter than painting. You know, when you're painting the bigger ones, you have a little more space to make those curves. You just pick up a smaller brush and you should be fine. It's coming right along. We have a, a sunshine with uh, flowers all around the outer edge of the sunshine. And it says, you are my sunshine. And it gives the six grandkids. And then I have another one that says, you are my hearts. And it is a heart one. So each, each family has a section of their kiddos. But almost always grandmothers like that. So it is a pretty safe gift for grandma. And especially great grandma. But if you, if you were like us, you would have had to have multiple lemons to put all the virus on there because my my mother-in-law had a lot she might have needed a couple of three lemons to fill it all up to make room for all her grandkids She had, oh, I don't know, somebody who's watching, so many random, so many grandkids. Mike's not out here. It, it, there, for, for beginners, there was nine kids of their kids, so there was all of those kids. No, they didn't have nine. No one had nine, but they... Um, it's a big family. And if you want to pray for one of them, uh, one of them has, has, is recovering from COVID and needs our prayers. And I actually haven't painted this before, so I may end up changing up some of the the shades as I go along just to see if I like the darker or the brighter. So it's one of those that is on paper and it is colored on paper, but it is 
it hadn't been on a piece of wood yet. Hey Patty, thank you for watching. I'm painting a a lemon, but it it has the words on it that say um, Papa and Grandmama's lemon drops, and then it has our grandkids' names around the outer edge on the little lemons. So that's a, a nice little grandmother Mother's Day gift. If you're already ahead of the game and you're planning and thinking about that, that's something you can remember that um, we have this if you want to paint it. And it can be a door hanger size this is a 12 inch to go on a little stand and i'm going to use it either on my mantle or my tabletop not sure just somewhere pretty that i can enjoy then I think I'm going to move to a bright yellow or a yellow. Let's see which one is I prefer. This one's just yellow, not bright. So I'm going to try it first. I think I like it better. And I'm going to do this for my lemons. And I'm going to go ahead and just base coat those in and this would be a cute little summertime extra if you have especially if you have grandmother camp or grandparent camp or your grandkids to come and do I know that's pretty popular And this would be easy enough for your your kids to paint this for their grandparents. Because it's a pretty simple, basic pattern. So that would be fun. Hey, Jerry! Yeah, I saw you were having trouble with your phone. You had to get a new one. And, ooh, phones are, they're expensive. I'm just painting a little grandparent sign with the grandkids' names on it. <clears throat> so 
making the strokes as long as possible all the way across the lemon so you can't see where they um, start and stop. There's not going to be a lot of start and stop. And then two more on this side. And you could go all the way around this, depending on how many how many names you needed lemons for. Or you could just do four or three, however you, whatever you need, because you can just make that take that edge off. These do overlap, so they need to be ordered, and I need names if you want to do one of these. And you could do one. At a paint party, or you could do one um, you could order the blank and do it at home. Ooh, I picked up the wrong color. And if you're new watching us, we have a couple of other, uh, we are offering right now a workshop on shading, highlighting, and uh, outlining, and all of the brush strokes. And this will be a one-day workshop, and you will paint a, a springtime truck filled with roses. And I will teach you how to do it. You can get just the pattern for uh, and the and the instructions for fifteen dollars. And if you need the blank, it's another ten. And we can um, that can be shipped there, uh, whatever that cost would be. But we are going to teach that. If you can get it cut yourself, then there's an obvious, it would only be $15. And we're going to do that in the, uh, on the 25th of, of March. And it'll say, Hello Spring. And I think, well, I don't know what day. Mike, what day does spring start this year? Is it? Do what? What day does spring start? What day does spring start? Uh-huh. Uh, Is it the, about the, the 17th? 23rd or 21st or something like that. Yeah, maybe that's 21st. Anyway, we will um, we'll be we'll be ready for spring if we paint ours on the 25th. We can hang it up and make sure to paint your edges. See, I got some painted and some not. So I'm going back and paint my little yellow edges. That's probably the one thing I dislike is filling in those edges. They're just usually the paintbrush don't fit. And Erica asked today, "What is your least favorite thing?" Well, maybe that. And I don't I don't like um, base coating too much, but it's not that bad. Mike does it a lot because he says he can do that and he, you don't have to know how to paint to base coat. Okay, now it's going to set like that. And I'm going to go back and check out her pattern. Um, I think I'm going to leave it like that and then... I'm going to get my liner brush and I'm going to see if I have one of those tiny ones up here that Bethany likes so much. 
It might be easier in this space. I think I got, I think I, yeah, oh, maybe it'll work. And then I'm going to get black and put a little bit of black in my, in my container, in my little tray. And I'm going to, oh, I didn't pick up the right one. I thought I picked up a, oh, um, I can't keep up with myself. I'm going to use this one and see how it goes. And if not, I'll switch to my big one. All right, so we're going to put some little dots. And we're just going to make little swirls. I love making little swirls. You just wiggle your brush along side to side. And right here, you can put a dot and a dot. See? And then, I'm going to start over here. I didn't actually get up. Let me fill this in. Because I, I didn't quite fill in my... All the way up. I think I picked up the other color. Go back over that with a pale daffodil. And see if I have one of the, over here to do the same. Okay. Now. I'm going to. You know. You fill your brush up all the way. You put as much on there until it's up to the metal and then and then you just take off making a little sachet across there and I was really not moving my my fingers, I was moving my arm to make that move along. All right, and now I've got to outline all these little lemons. So we're just, um, I think I'm going to add a little bit of shading between those, and on that, I'm going to choose King's Gold. And I'm going to shade underneath my lemon where they overlap. And I'm going to use a brush that's angled. So this end here is longer than this end here. And I'm going to wet my brush and wipe it off on each side. And I'm going to dip just the corner into my paint. And then I'm going to drag it back and forth just to give a, a shadow underneath that one and you may need to load it you know those are not that's not a lot of color you may need to load it several times and that one was still a little bit wet so don't want to deal with that all right one more time i'm going to try that and then I don't have to go back and fix that where I move the paint. And by moving the paint, sometimes when it's wet, it will just brush away from the base coat. And you can see the, the white coming through. And until it dries, there's just leave it alone and let it dry because you can't fix it. But these over here are dry, so I am just dragging that brush and you want it to float into the center of your paintbrush so it's floating into the center and giving me that um, shadow uh, anywhere you have a shadow then you need a highlight so we are going back on this side with white <coughs> and I'm going to come around here with just a little bit of white 
and make that curve. Keep your brush flat. Don't don't be painting up on the edge of it. Keep your paintbrush flat because you want the the process is for it to come into the middle of your paintbrush and thin out so that as it moves along there's very little um, there's very little paint at the end of your of your I mean there's little paint in the middle you want it to float into the middle and not be as solid and dark and you may need to go back and just drag it with water and not any more paint because if you're getting more of a dark line this one right here is a little bit like that and over here also I, d I want to go back there's put some lighter on that outer edge and this over here is where it overlaps that gold there so I'm gonna do that and let me see if I can get it close enough that you can see that that light area some of them are a little more light than you you need you just want a faint faint line of that just blend it in and don't get so much paint on your tip of your brush that that you're making a big white line you don't want a white line you want a, a faded line a very opaque line so there I think this was better and you can see those areas that are the outer edge we've just added a little light highlight to them so that's just a rule of thumb if you have a a shaded area then you need to come right behind it right beside it and put the sh highlighted area like right here you can see that dark line I'm gonna come right here and I'm keeping it flat and dragging it away and then I have a highlighted area and you can bring that all the way down Like that and then you can highlight the other the top of this one also I'm gonna put a little more water on my brush if you would like to sign up for our workshop it is uh, I'll put a link in the comments but I really am hoping that we have uh, about 30 that would be fabulous and if you would like to give it a try I think you will learn a lot I, I teach brush strokes on how to um, brush strokes on how to paint using you know anybody can paint if you learn brush strokes to make it happen you don't have to be born with already knowing I was not born already knowing how to paint but you don't have to have fancy lessons either and you just practice brush strokes that I can teach you and help you learn those so uh, I'm going to post something in the comments so that you can go to the link and you can paint with us and if you can't be there that night it is okay we are it will be recorded and uh, and you can watch it as you need to so now I'm going to write their names and uh, I think that's 
maybe it's not wet enough. Let me dry it really quickly because I don't want to smear it up. Let me get my blow dryer. And then I'm going to put my carbon back under there, and I'm going to write their name in the way it was printed on the paper. So if you saw our little truck for our, um, if you saw our, our uh, ad or our announcement, then Bethany made that graphic and she did a real good job. So we would love for you to join us and it'll be fun. We'll meet some new people and we'll be on a Facebook Live and we can enjoy learning how to paint together. And you could write these names with a Posca pen and let it dry before you seal it. Make sure that's not getting too much junk on there. Give it a whirl here. All right, my name, my grandmother name is grandmother, except for one of my grandkids calls me grandmother. So my alias is grandmama. I guess my other alias is grandmother. Because I go by both. And he definitely named me that all by himself because that was not my pick. But he never knew that. He just went with grandmother. And I love it. I think it's sweet. And then we have Pawpaw. Because that's what his Pawpaw was called. And he wanted to be Pawpaw like him. And I'm not a fan, as I've said before, of writing out or, or freehanding words. So this is my solution to that. Just write them with graphite paper. Or good old-fashioned carbon, as many of us know it by. But it got a fancy name one day, graphite. But I'm assuming they're all the same. I think I I think drops may need to come down. Let's see. 
and make sure. This is a cute font that Bethany picked. And we draw our patterns in Procreate, so once we've done that, most of the time we can write in our words. And then we have them for the parties that people can trace it off on their pattern and write them out and not have to be concerned about um, messing it up because they are afraid to write, but they're okay. Most of the, most of them are okay writing it with the, I mean, painting it on if they have the words on there already. And sometimes we clean them up a little bit, but mostly people do it themselves. So, I'm going to lay that over there. Some of that paint right there came off a little bit. Let's see if I can... When it gets dry, maybe I can get it back on there. I don't know what happened to it. So, let's see. We had some different colors to write the names with. And we're going to use a pretty blue um, Caribbean, I think. And then outline it with a little bit. Or was it written in red? I mean, black. And then, I don't know. When Bethany transferred it to my, lap, my iPad, the fonts didn't all move over there. So, I'm going to paint it with the blue. And I'm going to shade it with the black. And make it sort of a 3D. And so if you're using a little skinny, this is a number, I think this is a, I don't know, I can't see the number. It's kind of smudged. But anyway, how can I see that? It's smudged up pretty bad. I'm, I'm pretty rough on paintbrushes. So I'm just following these lines and filling in the letters. And these liner brushes, you can they will turn and curve for you pretty well. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna start way over here on this on grump on pawpaws because I'm gonna I don't wanna drag my hand through it. Unfortunately your yours is probably backwards so it pawpaw looks like it's backwards. But it isn't Hey, Melba. I'm painting a, I'm painting a grandparent lemon drops. It's got all the grandkid names on it.
Yeah, it's getting a little heavy with paint. I'm going to wash that off. And we're putting some little serifs up at, on the some of the letters. Those little lines across there. And it just gives them a, a little extra whimsy. Come back and fill in any I missed. This one just runs a little bit beyond. The A has one at the bottom, the W's have some at the top, and the S's are like that. That one kind of ran into the W. All right, let's see what else is on our pattern. Um, all right, then lemon. So if you're looking around in Hobby Lobby or any of those, lemons are very popular. And so this is going to match well with some of our mantle makeup that we're doing for, uh, I think it's May, but I... I have to ask Bethany. She has the chart. Or it may be just for me to put on my counter and not worry about the other because I also heard her talking about strawberries. So I guess we may ask our mantle makeup people do they like strawberries or do they like lemonade? Lemons. And maybe that would help us decide. But if you are interested in doing mantle makeup, it is... We've already mailed out April, but we have some more. If you would like to join, you can order. Or if you want to give it as a gift to someone else that would be great or for your grandkids most of these um, are things that teenagers and above could paint so it would be a good grandmother gift to give your grandchild to To foster that desire to paint. My granddaughter came over yesterday or Monday and she painted. I guess it was Monday or Tuesday. And she painted. And they just enjoyed that. Let's see. Did I not have serifs on those? Yeah, I did. Okay. Not on all of them, though. So, that's all of those. So, go back and paint. And, how did I miss that? So, as Bethany has said, these little brushes are more like using a pencil. That, than the longer one that I like to use. And I think she's about sold me on at least writing with these. I like the others to make uh, swirly vines and stuff. Alright, and for the girls' names, we're going to put those in blue. And for the boys' names, we're going to do red. So fun. Alright, 
that's one. And we have a we have three and three, so Let me wash my brush. It's getting thick. It just it just dries. Some of the uh, paint dries up, and then it gets just. Okay. I don't know what to call it, but it starts to make your brush not move as easily. So you need to clean it. After some people do it after every letter, I usually can do two letters, maybe three, depending on how much how big they are. All right, and one more girl name. Okay, and then for the boys' names, we're going to switch to red to do their colors. And uh, I'm going to use red apple. I'm not out of that one. Turn it upside down. And then we got three boy names, so... We'll start over here. And you're you're starting right up on the tip of that. It's not a these are slim, skinny letters. So you not the harder you press it down, the wider it gets. So we're gonna lightly touch. It. Okay, we got a little bit past there. Let's see if I can pick that back up. And I always paint them backwards so that I don't get my hand in. And if you can't go all around that curve of the C, you can pick it up and start back. Let's see where I can get this last one in. I don't want to get my hand in the paint. That's a, a hard angle. Do you need something? I was looking for the angel wings pattern. Um, I think it got put with Christmas. We are getting ready for a party this weekend and with stage or phase three we can have parties so if anybody's ready to have a party I think we can get together we can 
finally get to get back together with all of our painting friends. Okay, let me see if I can straighten up that eye a little bit. Let me pull it around here. Head a little crooked. And I also made this a little bit higher than I wanted it. So I'm going to try to scrape that one off. And then bring it down. And I'm going to fill in that part right there. And then make my A a little bit further down. These are all a little bit lower than you normally make the crossbar. Alright. Now, I'm going to go back up here because I left, I made a mess. Or... I don't know if I made a mess, but something did. The paint um, I got some of the graphite paper on the on my paint, so I'm gonna clean that up because it came off on the on my painting. Because if it's wet a little, sometimes it'll smudge. It's not much. It's not it's not a lot. And I'm going to bring some of these down to make more of a rounded, you know how lemons have that rounded area. Some of these kind of stop short. Alright. Okay. That's I think I'm well no I'm not quite done. I was going to these were supposed to be outlined. Um, so I'm going to outline the letters in the middle. So here we go. Good. I found it. I think you put it in the attic in the Christmas. I'm talking about the, the paper pattern. I thought we had uh, one in. I don't know. I guess we did at some point. <clears throat> This just highlights it a little bit to make it 3D looking.
just working my way along. Almost to the end. And I may have gotten this reversed on what Bethany had drawn it. The letters were black with maybe blue highlights, but I couldn't tell. So either way, it has a 3D effect when you do the, the letters like this or 2D or whatever that is. Okay, I think that's all of the, the, oh no, there's some here. All right, so here's all my grandbabies. And let me bring it up. Maybe you can, all right. So here they are. And those are all six of my grandchildren. And I'm going to set this on a little shelf or on, and on a little stand and use it for the springtime. So I hope you like it. If you want to do one, send us a message. And it'll be a cute little uh, Mother's Day gift if you want to plan ahead. And uh, let us know. Y'all have a good night and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.